So one of the things that you need to become better at when you're learning how to program is how to debug. So I've been coding for almost 10 years now, and this is the main approach I like to take when I'm debugging applications. Now in this video, I want to show you more like a JavaScript approach of how you can debug Node.js code. And this is a really, really simple example. So I don't know how much you'll take away from this, but if you're a beginner, I think you might learn a lot. Now, before you actually judge the approach I like to use, this is the approach that has helped me over the years. And this is like the go-to approach I always do. There's probably other approaches, but for some reason, this seems to be the most efficient way to get things running. But before I dive into this topic, I want to make sure to remind you to press that like button. If you enjoyed watching my content and you want to help my channel grow and also be sure to press that subscribe and bell icon. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, that should hopefully help you become a better web developer or software engineer. So I have some code set up. I kind of have a really, really basic Node.js application and I want to walk you through what it does and kind of explain to you that there is a bug in this code that I kind of added in. In, and I want to show you the approach I would potentially take to debug this application. Now, I would recommend that you do the same approach and you kind of do it to the same extent that I'm doing it. Again, this is a really basic example, but let's just go ahead and look at the code and see how far we can take this and what you can potentially learn from this debugging exercise. So I have a really basic Node.js application, but the gist of this application is it reads in a file and based on the command line arguments that you pass in. So for an example, if I were to run this with node space index.js, and then pass it comma, it'll count how many commas exist in the sentence. So for an example, this has two commas, right? Should be pretty straightforward to implement and check out. But I introduced a bug into this code, and this is an actual bug that you might see in the real world, right? This is like a real life production bug that may potentially happen when you're learning how to code or when you're trying to debug a system. So let's just go ahead and run this program. And you'll notice that it's not doing anything. It's kind of stuck. So at this point, you have to scratch your head a little bit and be like, okay, well, what's going on? How can I figure out why it's stuck? And again, this is a really, really basic example. So I don't know how much um, value you'll get from this, but I hope you learned something. So the first thing I potentially do when I'm trying to debug issues with this is I try to find the actual spot that might be breaking. Okay, there's a lot of places that code could break. If you're dealing with a REST API, you might want to actually go to the, the individual you know, express route and kind of start there. Or if you have more insight into like which function is actually the function causing issues, then actually load up that function. And then once you find the function, or in this example, I'm gonna start with the main function because it's so simple, I would start just trying to run the code and make sure that nothing is wrong. So the first thing here is it should throw an error if I don't provide an argument. So if you don't know in Node.js, this is how you can actually grab command line arguments argv happens to be all of the arguments that are in the command line. So index zero will be node, index one will be index.js, and then index two would be this comma, right? So I wanna make sure that does this code actually do what it's supposed to do? It's supposed to throw an exception if I don't pass something in. So let's just go ahead and delete the comma and run it. And that works fine. So I know that the issue is not before this block of code, right? I hope you can be convinced that the issue is past this code. And before I dive in, there's another technique that I like to do all the time, and it involves doing a ton of console logs. So before I even go down that approach of like not passing in the comma, what I would potentially do is now there's better ways to do this, but this is honestly like I did this, I think yesterday. No, I did this today trying to debug an issue. I literally just added a bunch of console logs. And the way I do it is I increment that console log by one. So this statement would be console log one. This one would be console log two. Down here before the main, I do console log three. Then inside the main, I would do console log four. And you might laugh at me and be like, dude, this is such a silly approach. But honestly, this seems to be the most efficient way, especially when you don't want to hassle setting up your debugger, setting up the breakpoint, and doing all that logic. Sometimes just adding a couple console logs, maybe one, two, or three, can actually help you give you insight as to where the issue is. And if you're a beginner, you don't want to learn the how to use a debugger, this is probably the most common approach. I would suggest doing. Now, the reason I'm adding a log before every single execution is I need to figure out where is this program locking up? Where is it actually breaking? So let's just go ahead and save this file. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this same code again. And notice that it prints out one, two, three, four, five, but then it gets stuck, right? So the question is, where did it get stuck? Well, I expected it to print out six down here, but it never printed out six. So I can assume there's something wrong with this count characters function, right? So I found the actual issue with that function and I know that this is the thing that's causing issues. Now you have to figure out why is this causing the computer to completely freeze up 
And there's a couple things you potentially do. You could say, well, I'm doing an await on it. So maybe there's a promise inside that function that's not being resolved. Maybe it's listening to some type of user input. Maybe I need to type in something to get it to kind of execute. That's not happening. So before you even dive into the code, start making these assumptions of like what could potentially be wrong with this function. Um, if I were to comment this function out, does everything work? Run it, everything works. It kind of crashes obviously because count's not defined anymore, but you know that you made it past it, right? So if I say let count is equal to zero and rerun this code, it, it runs fine. Obviously it doesn't actually do the thing you want, but you've convinced yourself that the issue is this count characters function, right? So I would recommend that you try to follow that approach as well when you're trying to debug issues. Try to pinpoint the exact line of code or the exact function that's causing you grief so that you can actually start debugging the individual function. Now, in a professional setting, what I would do is I would go to the unit tests that cover this function and run those unit tests. If those unit tests fail, then I can start doing test-driven development to kind of fix the implementation and figure out why this function doesn't work the way it's supposed to. But since test-driven development might be a term that you're not familiar with or it might be more advanced, what I would recommend doing, obviously, is dive into the function and try to figure out what's going on. So in this case, this is a super simple example. I have a while true statement in here, so obviously this is why this function is going to break. But if you imagine this function is 50, 60, 70 lines of code, I would recommend that you do that same exact approach, right? I'll go here and then maybe what you could do is you could start console, console logging A's, you could console log B's, and then you can also console log some C's. And again, this is like a really, really basic approach, but honestly, this approach actually is pretty efficient because you don't have to deal with the debugger, which there's nothing wrong with the debugger per se, but it does take a lot more extra setup, especially when you're dealing with Node. I mean, you might argue with me, but like, dude, it's like one line of, it's like an extra flag you pass to Node, but then you gotta load up Chrome, you gotta go to your colons, inspect um, URL, and you gotta inspect the, the code. It's just, it's just a lot of extra hassle. Whereas I could just add a couple of console logs, refresh my server, and then hit my endpoint and see what's going on. So that's basically why I like doing this approach it's kind of uh, elementary, but honestly, this approach is bomb. So if you notice here, we print out one, two, three, four, five, A, um, and hopefully I wasn't blocking, hopefully my webcam wasn't blocking that, but you see it prints out one, two, three, four, five, A, and now the code is actually stopping here. So we know exactly which line is causing us to have a debug. So if I go and just delete this line, maybe it'll fix our issue. So let's just go ahead and stop, rerun the program, and notice that it says we found two commas in the file. So now the program is fixed Everything is working the way we wanted it to, and we can continue on to try to implement new logic, maybe do a git commit, add this, and just, you know, all this done. So that is honestly my go-to approach. I like doing console logs. You know, you could, again, you could laugh at me, but I think this approach actually works pretty well. And once you found the issue, you can just go ahead and delete your console logs or do a git stash or something and you're kind of back to the production ready code that you had before. So if you're a beginner, I recommend you kind of follow this approach, just console log everywhere that you can because you need to figure out which execution is actually failing your program. What statement is causing the issue? Or maybe it's like a, a more of like what function is causing the issue. Once you find that, it kind of helps you narrow down your focus and you can actually figure out like what is wrong with your program. Honestly, that's all I wanted to share with you all. If you actually enjoyed watching this and you think this debugging approach is good, give me a thumbs up. Also leave a comment below if you have a special way that you like debugging your applications. Honestly, when it comes to Node.js and JavaScript, there's really two ways. You can use a debugger or you can use console log statements. And I know a lot of people, especially on my team, we all just go to console log statements because it's actually a lot easier especially when you're dealing with transpiled code like React or whatever, and then Babel messes up your code, you have to set up source maps, and sometimes when you put that break line, it doesn't actually stop at the correct place in code. So that's the one reason I don't really like using the debugger, but honestly, there's probably just a little bit more time I can invest to make sure that the system is set up fluidly for the debugger. And like always, be sure to click that subscribe button and that bell icon if you wanna get more videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer and maybe teach you a little bit about how to debug your code if you are stuck on something in the future. Have a good day and happy coding.